oh wow it's chaos always chaos um i promise i have done this enough to be theoretically better at it now <laughs> oh dear right what was i talking about And welcome to episode 10 of Mary Little Makes. I'm Mary, I am a knitter, an aspiring knitwear designer and fibre art enthusiast coming to you from Bristol in the UK. Um, if you're new, hi, welcome, nice to meet you and if you're returning thank you so much for coming to join me again. As always it's been a while, this is becoming a recurring theme isn't it, but I'm hoping that um, things are going to settle down in our house a little bit. So. <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, um, we've had a slightly unexpected house guest for a little while and it's it's not been bad but we don't have loads of space in our house and three full grown adults and two dogs means that quiet periods to record are quite few and far between plus with the days getting shorter I've just not really had much time on a weekend which is the only time that I can kind of film during the day which is when I have light. So. I'm back after a little hiatus, which means I've got loads of stuff to talk about, way more than usual. So just to um, kind of confirm with you again, I still think that there is no need to stress about how much you're knitting or how many things you're knitting or how fast you're going. It's a topic I talk about a lot, but uh, before I get into the small mountain of things next to me, I do want to clarify the last time I uploaded was I think September. So yeah, because it was before Roots and Stitches launched. So it was a long time ago. So we're talking about like three, nearly four months worth of knitting. So when you put it in those terms, it isn't as much maybe as it probably looks. Um, so I just want to say that up front before anyone kind of goes, oh my gosh, so many things. Um, knitting should be a thing that we do at our own pace. Um, it's a slightly lower tech um, setup today because my microphone isn't working so I hope you can hear me okay. I'll record this and then and then we'll see. <laughs> um, the light is also going in and out because there is some beautiful, you can probably tell, beautiful winter sunshine over there um, but it means that the light might dip in and out a bit so apologies if uh, the lighting changes quite a lot. So this this podcast, if you're new here, follows a pretty straightforward format. I go through um, finished objects, things that I'm working on, and then I might have a bit of chatter at the end. Um, and it's my 10th episode, so I think it's my 10th episode. I should know that. Okay, so starting off with what I'm wearing, you'll notice I'm wearing two pieces of knitwear and they're both new. Uh, and I'm very excited about both of them for different reasons. So I'm going to start with the hat. This is a beautiful muscle burra hat which is a design by Isolde Teague and it was made for me by Sarah of Sarah Kareen Knits. Um, she featured it on an episode of hers a little while ago and was saying how she wasn't really sure about the colour and then she kind of mulled and went hmm but I know someone who loves yellow and I immediately went in her comments like I love it! Um, I do, yellow is my favourite colour uh, to wear. Weirdly I never thought I'd say that but it, it has become definitively true. Um, neutrals i.e greys and blacks and dark things and yellow and I do wear quite a lot of green now as well but it seems that that's just become my kind of accent colour I guess of choice which I never thought I'd say but I love this thing so much um, the fact that it was made for me by a friend the fact that it's come all the way from Canada for me I have worn it a ton already I wore it to work the other day and got loads of compliments on it and it just feels like I'm getting a little a little hug from her every time I wear it. It makes me so happy. I have no idea what the fibre is. I should know what... I'll, I'll ask her what the yarn is and put it on the screen if she remembers. Um, I can't remember if it was a gift though. But it's this beautiful, happy yellow colour. There's some other yellow <laughs> kicking around. Um, I... Yeah, it, go, it also goes with a pair of custom trainers. I have a pair of yellow suede trainers that sneakers that go perfectly with this as well so whenever I wear the two it doesn't matter what else I'm wearing it just instantly looks like I'm really put together which is very fun um yeah so that's my hat it's a muscle burrow I have many muscle burrows as well I've knit many of them myself it's a great pattern can highly recommend it is a I can't 
can't remember what they call it, gageless pattern. So basically you start knitting up with whatever yarn you have because you start from the center and work your way out, knit a big tube and then work your way in at the other end. And there are kind of instructions on how to do, to do that. It is a paid for pattern, but honestly, it's one of the most, I think one of the most versatile hat patterns. You can build a lot of other things from it. And also I've made four or five now, so definitely, definitely worth buying. Um, it's all to put so much time and energy into the patterns that, that are written. And I've just, I've just got a lot of time for her as a designer. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> second thing I'm wearing, my first sweater, it's finished. And oh my gosh, I love it so much. Is it a teeny, teeny, tiny bit damp still? Yes. Am I wearing it anyway? Also yes, because it's so cold uh, in the UK at the moment. It's taken, oh, it's just taken so long to dry. And that's not, that's not the pattern or anything. That's just the temperatures right now. And the fact that I can't have the heating on in my house too much because gas prices. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a tiny bit, it's a tiny, tiny bit damp still, but I was like, I don't care, I'm going to wear it anyway. And I, I, I love it so much. I cannot explain how, how in love with it I am. Uh, I wrote it completely to pattern, absolutely no modifications. I, I will double check, but I think I did the fifth size. There are 11 sizes in the pattern. Lizzie's done an absolutely incredible job, massively size inclusive. Um, she had it professionally graded. So what's my name? It's probably mohair in my eye, of course. Ugh, knitter problems. Right, there we go, gone. Um, yeah, so Lizzie of Hive Knits has done an incredible job. This was her first pattern, which I still kind of can't believe. She has since come out with a cardigan version of it, which is also beautiful. Um, so I'm going to stand up a little bit so you can see, but I made it intentionally very oversized. So I've mentioned this before, but there is quite a lot of positive ease in the body anyway. So if that's something that you would rather not have, then you just it's just something to bear in mind. So this is the fifth size. Um, <clears throat> and it's got this like very simple, straightforward construction, raglan increases, lovely folded collar, which I'll get back to in a second. And then this is the star of the show. It looks so nice in the sunlight. Look at it. This squishy goodness is half fisherman's rib and the blocking is wild. So it, as with all knitting, it grows, oh, it changes dimensions a little bit. I should say not everything grows. Um, but Lizzie takes into account the fact that half fisherman's rib grows um, lengthways a lot, or it can grow lengthways a lot when it's blocked. So when you first knit the sleeve, they look width-wise ginormous. And they are quite big, right? Like this is quite a statement sleeve. They're quite wide, but they look even more ridiculously wide. And I remember when I first finished them thinking like, I've made this thing oversized as well. So is this gonna look just absolutely wild on me and actually once it's blocked I really I made an effort to like quite aggressively stretch the arms out and now they're just they're absolutely perfect they they sit if I'm not doing anything with them they sit like right on um my like the bottom of my thumb which is where I love for them to sit there's enough elastic there's enough decrease into this cuff that I can push them up and they will stay up I've got a white t-shirt and those do um which I love so yeah really 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 happy with it the one thing I will say, and again, this is mentioned in the pattern, it's not um, secret or anything like that, because there is, there's a lot of yarn in here. I'll get to the yarn in a second, but there's a lot of yarn in this, which means it is, it's not heavy. Like I'm wearing it and it doesn't feel heavy at all. I haven't measured it, I haven't weighed it yet, and I haven't measured my yardage yet, which I will do. Um, but there's a lot of knitting and there's a lot of fabric, which means that this beautiful collar does just naturally want to pull out a lot so she gives you directions about putting um sewing some elastic into the neckband and because it's a folded neckband what I did was I just got some clear fisherman like it looks like fishing line but it's elastic um you could also just use fabric um like elastic as well it's it's a kind of swings around about thing because it is a little piece of plastic but at the same time it does make quite a big difference to the fit and um, it's a really easy thing to take out if I want to at some point in future as well. So I've just done it and actually it's made a massive difference. So I just threaded mine through the inside of the tube. So it's actually not attached at all 
to the sweater which is great because if I want to take it out I can literally just find it like pull apart a stitch find that little clear thread cut it and then just pull it out this is really easy to remove if you if also if you want to do it and you go oh it's too tight or it's too loose it's really easy to change which is lovely and it's just made it sit absolutely perfectly like this is exactly where I want it to be it's not choking me but at the same time it's not falling so wide that it kind of ruins the line of where the raglan is so yeah I'm absolutely thrilled with this um I can see it being a thing that I'm going to wear all the time it's like a giant hug it's so warm and cozy and fluffy and right now there are going to be mobile <laughs> fibers all over the place probably in the camera because of the sunshine um, because it because it's just been finished it will molt for a little while mohair always does for a little bit and then it will calm down after the first few wears um wearing a white long sleeve t-shirt underneath this may have been an error actually in hindsight but it's fine so yeah this is my first sweater i absolutely love it i can see more in my future but i will say this stitch does take quite a long time so I intentionally chose not to stress about how long this was taking me I knit the for, for reference I knit the body in like less than a week and then each sleeve took me I had a big pause on it so in real terms I think each sleeve probably took me a couple of weeks um of knitting around kind of work and stuff like that. I did have a lot of gaps. This took me over a year to complete, not for any reason other than I just started it at a really silly time of year. And then I just didn't want to knit on it in the summer and I kind of forgot about it and then picked it back up and I've really enjoyed it. And I wish I'd had it a bit earlier when, we, when things were really cold, but there we go. It's finished now and I will wear it loads now that we're officially in winter and I'm very happy with it. The final thing I'm wearing, and I'm not gonna stick my foot up and I'm going to take take one of them off to show you because that's much more useful is my birds of prey socks this is the first sample I ever made of them um so these are <clears throat> available on my website they're very simple um they have my favorite toe up construction which has a really easy increase um and I think fairly invisible in not invisible but not as obvious an increase as a knit front back, which is quite a standard one to do. Uh, they have this lovely little stitch pattern that runs up the centre, which is just enough interest, but they are still just a, a vanilla sock, so they go quite quickly. Uh, this particular pair have, I think, a, sh a mock short row heel, if I remember rightly. should remember that, really. Uh, and then they've also got a little, little cable detail on the cuff. So I really like those. They are my Birds of Prey socks and they are knitted up. This particular pair is knitted up in Nervous Fibre, 100% Corridale, of course, in the buttered colourway. And then the heels are just like a little mini skein of green uh, that came in a sock set. So I'm not sure what the actual colourway is. I'm not sure if there is a colourway of that. There you go. That was really long. That was like 15 minutes or so on <laughs> what I'm wearing. But there you go. <laughs> okay let's move into finished objects all right so my first finished object is obviously my first sweater which is very cool I then have two more two more to talk about um but actually no three more to talk about one of them I'll have to put some photos up if you follow me on Instagram you will have possibly already seen them this was a pair of socks I made for my best friend Monica um they started out as just a bit of fun and then we decided to make it kind of kind of a wedding present kind of a birthday present thing so uh this beautiful yarn was made dyed up made <laughs> dyed up by my good friend our good friend maria it's 100 percent corridale i think just based on uh what it looks like and what it feels like i'm pretty sure that it's 100 percent corridale it's definitely non-superwash by the look of it um so the grey was a cheap, there's like a, there you go, that's a bit more true. So the grey tone on the base was created by dyeing it with black beans. And then she put an acid dye over the top with a blue variegation in it. And I was at her house and saw this yarn and was like, wow, that's amazing. It looks exactly like a certain house of a magical school that begins with R. The house begins with R. Um which is all I'm going to say about that. So, um, yeah, we're all big 
we're all big fans and uh, that is Monica's house. So I was like, this is a perfect Monica colorway. And Maria was like, yes, absolutely. So we decided, she, she said, you take this and make something for her with it. So I made a pair of socks and then I duplicate stitched a, a little M on each sock as well which kind of helped make it look a little bit more like the school um like school uniform and also um it was just a really nice way to add another pop of, pop of color and make it super personalized to her um i really like duplicate stitch i don't know why i don't do it more it's quite time consuming but when it's done it just always looks um so yeah i made a pair of socks i'll put them on the put some photos of them on the screen she absolutely loves them um Construction wise, I just did a really straightforward sock, I think. Um, yeah, just a toe up vanilla sock. I always do toe, toe up with um, yarn when I'm not sure how much I'm going to need because I just know that I can try and use up a little bit more. But also, Mon doesn't like socks that go too high up in her legs, so I have got a fair amount left. I've definitely got enough for toes, heels, and cuffs on something or to do something else with. Um, I don't love doing toes, heels and cuffs in variegated yarn unless the whole sock is variegated yarn. I kind of prefer to have the variegation in the in the leg of the sock because I just feel like it doesn't come across best in that teeny tiny space of just a toe or like just a heel. So I'll probably do something else with it. Um, but yeah, make, like maybe make a little square for a blanket or something like that. Um, I have an idea to try and make some bunting with scraps as like a nice little scrappy project. Obviously this time of year, loads of people are talking about advents and what they're doing with their advents. And um, I think it was Crea Bayer who was like, she had a plan for a project and then she'd used a base color that happened to be really similar to a few of the colors from the alternate, the alternate advent. And the alternate advent is quite a specific one because A, it's really, really cheap comparatively to all other advents, which is lovely, but it doesn't really speak to the amount of work that still goes into making them. Um, so Kim's done a great thing and it's all recycled, upcycled yarn um, and she kind of blends the colourways herself but obviously she's limited to whatever she gets in as far as donations and um, cones and stuff like that. So because it's all recycled rather than purchased, um, what's the word, new yarn, it's all yarn that already exists. So um, I think Advents have this thing, they're a bit like mystery knit alongs, where it's like, because you don't know what the colours are going to be, if you decide to start knitting a project as you go and as you open them, there's always that risk that you're going to come across some colours you don't like, or you picked the wrong contrast colour that doesn't work super well with all the colours that you have. Um, so yeah, I, I was thinking about it. I've not ever gotten involved with Advents because it just feels like there's too much unknown for me. I feel I that my brain always thinks there's going to be waste because there'll be, th there'll be colours that I don't like or there'll be bases I don't like or something and I'm quite particular about these days especially I'm quite particular about my yarn choices so I've never gotten into advents because I just I don't like the the mystery idea because it feels like I'm gonna wa end up wasting stuff but I understand how I understand why they're really exciting and I love that people I love watching other people doing them and I, I was thinking about like other mini skein slash scrappy odds and ends projects that don't look super handmade because I think one of the arguments against scrappy projects a lot of the time is oh it just looks like you know something Mrs Weasley would make and that nobody would ever want to wear and that kind of stuff and I kind of agree there are very few scrappy garment projects that I think work really well one of them that I think does is the sea glass sweater uh, by Will and Pine um, I think that's a beautiful design I think they've done a really good job they've got a couple of other designs now as well that I think do a really good job of using up those odds and ends in like a slightly elevated way that doesn't look ha super handmade um but then for me the, the alternative is to do things that aren't necessarily garments or things that can exist in like a different be a different have a different use have a different purpose so I was thinking about bunting because I love the idea of doing like a cozy memories blanket and knitting loads of squares and putting them together but I also know myself and I know I will never ever do it so I think I have an idea about designing up a little triangle a little bunting triangle or a bunting square or something and just making a bunch of them and then when I've got enough just stringing them together and using them as like Christmas decoration or or something like that or maybe having them up all the time but um yeah, I think that might be something that I do with some 
odds and ends. Maybe I'll take you along for the journey if I decide to do that. So that was loads again on the socks. I'm really rambly today, apparently. <laughs> I've been in the house by myself for a while and I haven't spoken to anyone, so <laughs> that might be why. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna have some coffee, which is, oh no, it's not cold. Okay, that's good. This is some Blind Owl coffee from Bristol. It's a micro roastery here in Bristol, which is lovely. And this is a mug from, oh my God, it's completely gone. I'll put it on the screen. The name of it's completely gone. I got it from Etsy, they're a lovely maker. They do these beautiful breakfast cups. And the breakfast cups are like, big. <laughs> mm. Okay. So the next finished object I'm going to talk about is one that you've seen before and now it's done and oh my word this has got so much wear I can't even begin to talk about it. So this is the finished from my journey shawl. Oh I obviously can't get the whole thing in. There are some better photos of it on my Instagram if you're interested. I am obsessed with this. I love it so much. The combination of yarns, the combination of colours came out so well. This is how I wear it. Um, oh, I love it. It's such a good pattern. It was really fun to knit. Um, quite quick. I used... Oh! I didn't talk about what yarns I used for this guy. This is Holst Super Soft in the Granite colourway. Which I have. Hold. Which is in this one. This one here. That's Granite. And it's also drops, drops Kids Silk and Ash. I don't necessarily recommend drops. They're not a great company ethically, but they are a very uh, affordable Kids Silk. And at the time I didn't know anything about them as a company. So if you have drops, obviously use it, but ethically, mm. um, yeah. So that is the yarns in here. Now this one, the darker brownie grey is uh, Whistle Bear Cheviot Marsh in the colour Heartland, which I've still got loads left of. That's this one here, which is a beautiful colour. It's, um, yeah, it's just really interesting. It's got lots of variation. You can probably see even just from that ball. It goes darker and lighter. It is, I want to say Romney and something else. Cheviot Romney, I think. Um, blend. It's quite rustic, but um, I have traditionally been someone who struggles a little bit with very rustic, rustic yarns, like right here, like if it's just, just right there. And I think if this was knitted solely out of that, I might struggle a little bit. This this little bit here is just really sensitive and the top of my forehead, I just struggle a bit with more rustic yarns. Everything else is fine and everywhere else is fine. So I then paired it with this, and this is the Zakami Yarns Baby Alpaca Merino and Pima Cotton Fluff. If you're someone who is sensitive to mohair, this is a great alternative. It's so soft. Do I have it somewhere? I do. I have it right here. Oh. <laughs> uh, I have it here. So this is see that so it looks really thick on screen but it is i would say it's a, a lace weight um in terms of real thickness it's definitely not as thick as a fingering weight but when you knit it up with a fingering weight so the this is a fingering i didn't have to change gauge or anything it because of the fluff around it it knits up like a fingering weight so it's probably not necessarily one you could hold together with fingering like mohair and get exactly the same gauge you probably need to check it and it's got cotton <clears throat> in it which means it doesn't stretch in the same way that um wool does so it does it still stretches loads because knitted fabric does stretch but it's just worth bearing that in mind it behaves slightly differently but the two work be honestly beautifully together um and I'm going to take this off because I'm really hot now, but I love it. I wear it to work every single day. I get loads of compliments on it. Um, and I just think you could, obviously you can play so much with the colours, but um, Dolly's just a really clever designer. I really enjoy her stuff. I made a few mistakes on it. You can't tell. I'm not going to try and find them because it doesn't matter. Um, I just love it. And also, if you're a person who likes perfume but doesn't want it to be overwhelming 
pro tip, spray some perfume on your shawl and just leave it for a little while. And then every time you put your shawl on, you've got that little bit of perfume smell without it being like all over your body and you can't get rid of it. And then if it does feel like too much, you can just take the shawl off and the perfume's gone. If you're a person with sensory issues like I am, that's really helpful. <laughs> so that is my, from my journey, shawl. I'm gonna put that down here. And then my final finished object, which is also very exciting and entirely spontaneous and kind of out of the blue, is this guy. Ta-da! <laughs> Honestly, I, this is wild to me that I just went, oh, you know what, I'm just going to make a fingering weight sweater. So, context. I bought a, a kit, not a kit, I bought a set of 500 gram skeins from Tiny Teal Handcrafts, which is on Etsy. I'll put, I'll put links in the show notes to everything, but um, yeah, beautiful yarn as you can see. This is 100% BFL, which is one of my favourite yarns to knit, um, to knit with, especially to knit fingering weight garments. I just think it comes out beautifully. It's a little tiny bit variegated and you can only really tell in the grey, but I really like that about it. So it's not solid. It's got these kind of lighter and darker bits, which I really like. So I bought the five skeins because I got really excited and I got really impulsive one day and went, I'm going to hop on the latest Stephen West MCAL. Now bearing in mind what I said earlier, I don't know why I did this, because the concept of mystery knit-alongs, the re there's a reason I've never gotten involved with them, because you don't know what the end is going to be. And while I do love his designs and I think they're really interesting, and I think I was approaching it more from a I'm going to learn loads of new techniques, which I would have done, to be clear, but I wasn't a fan of this year's design. And I think this year's design was an interesting one because a lot of people were <clears throat> like not upset or angry but just like I don't really like this design and it's a lot of knitting to get halfway through and go I'm just never gonna wear this or it's also a lot of money like 500 gram skeins especially if you're buying from indie dyers it's a, re it's a really big investment of time it's a big investment of money and I was talking to Sarah Karine Knits who's also talked about this because she also jumped on the bandwagon for it um and I think both of us were just like we're too, we're, we're too much of a planner. I have no issue with anyone who's not, but just for myself personally, I need to know what the potential end result could look like. I need to know what the pattern's gonna be because I'm quite particular, more particular than I ever thought actually about the things that I wear. It's not that I don't wear things that are out there. I definitely do, but I don't know. I'm just, there are parameters apparently. <laughs> so I had these beautiful five skeins of yarn and I was like, what am I going to do with this now? Um, and I wanted to do something with the yarn because it was lovely and I was itching to make a fingering weight sweater. Now, I started my green sweater in the previous episode and I loved it, but I foolishly decided to just try and draft it from scratch with no reference to anything. And I just completely messed up the potent the rate of increases um, for the circular yoke and kind of got disheartened and I didn't want to keep ripping back Sarah's yarn because there is a certain I don't know it's just a really precious yarn to me and I wanted to kind of know what I was going to do with it I do have a plan for that now and I'll talk talk about that later but I decided to just self-draft a fingering weight sweater and not be afraid to rip out and oh my word I ripped this thing out a lot and I still knit it within two weeks which is wildly fast and I don't I'm not suggesting anyone should knit sweaters in two weeks um but I had a period of I've had a period of more insomnia than usual recently and I think that's contributed <laughs> to having these like vast swathes of quiet time at night to do nothing but knit so I um drafted this I decided I wanted it to be striped rather than colour blocked I just really liked the idea of it it was an it literally came to me as an idea in I have a sketch of it in my work notebook so I was in a meeting at work and just sketched out the idea quickly and went oh I think that could be cool so I don't know what the colorways are I don't know if they have names I should check on that if they do I'll put them on the screen or I'll put them in the show notes for, for sure um, but this is a really cool thing from Tiny Teal where you can pick five colors any five colors 
of the base that you choose and then she will custom dye them for you so it does take a little while to get them and I'm actually really glad about that because by the time I got mine the final design had come out and I was like oh I'm never gonna make that so <laughs> I didn't and went straight into making this so I'm glad I didn't start knitting that shawl to rip it out again um I'm actually also going to put some elastic into the top of this because I will say one thing is it does it does pull out a little bit which I'm not mad at it doesn't look bad but um I think I would prefer for it to be a little bit more cinched in there are loads of things I learned with this sweater I decided to I knit it to I think here and then decided I wanted it to be longer so I ripped it back I knit one kind of ribbing didn't like it so ripped it back I knit I think the sleeves I kept so the sleeves I just joined on knit them straight and then rapid decrease right at the end to do some cuffs and then this lovely little um yellow stripe up the middle that is crochet and it's so easy to do it does take a little while especially on fingering weights a lot of stitches to do but it it sinks beautifully right between the, the knitting so it looks like it's knit into the fabric so unlike duplicate stitch which sits on top which is still lovely by the way and would work if you didn't want to do the crochet method you could 100 percent just sew duplicate stitch up one whole um one whole column of stitches i couldn't remember the word for column <laughs> so it doesn't have a name it's completely self-drafted i'm not going to be making a pattern for it because as much as i love it there are a few fit things that i'm not super stoked about and if i was going to release it i'd want to do a number of things differently um but as a first self fully self-drafted sweater i'm absolutely thrilled with it i think it's so lovely and also the weights of it as I'm, I'm a bit obsessed with finger on white garments now um yeah as it turns out you know what i think it is being such a prolific sock knitter and i am still a very prolific sock knitter and i, I knit more socks than anything else I'm just really comfortable with fingering weight yarn and small needles and actually I think my hands just prefer it. I have tiny hands to start with despite being a pianist I have very very small hands and I think my hands are just more comfortable with smaller needles um this was knit on I want to say fours or 4.5 maybe um for the sleeves and then threes for the ribbing and the needles felt ginormous <laughs> because this was knit on three mil and my sock I do my socks usually on 2.25s and that's the stuff that I knit most of the time so this really felt lovely and familiar to me um yeah so it's a circular yoke I will say there is a little jog if I show you the back yeah so you can see where I've joined if I really cared about it I could have done I could have done better at the way that I joined my uh, new rounds in, but I don't. Th I don't think it's super obvious. No, and I don't care that much. And because it's fingering weight, the jogs are not as big as they would be if the stitches were bigger. So you can't tell that badly. So yeah, very happy with this. I'm very proud of it. I love it a lot, and it gave me a bit more confidence about designing my first garment pattern because that's happening in 2023 and i've been putting it off because i'm worried about not doing a good enough job and that's foolish <laughs> oh that's um it's beautiful but also blinding all right let's do works in progress okay so i have three works in progress four works in progress <laughs> Four works in progress to talk about and then a design to talk about at the end so the first work in progress it's not super exciting but these are my bus socks so i get the bus to work i don't go in every day but i go in at least two days a week to my office which is about a half hour bus journey either way and so i had i have cast on a little pair of socks and this is ooh, there we go these are just vanilla cuff down because I think I've mentioned this before I love knitting toe up from a practical standpoint but I prefer the fit and the finish of cuff down there you go make it make sense so I am using the remains and there's a re this is why I'm knitting two up which I don't do very often anymore 
I'm knitting with the remainder because I've got loads left of the beautiful yellow that was in my stripy sweater. Um, and I'm just going to knit for as long as I can and then finish off in another colour. So there'll be a there'll be a colour block and I'm not mad at that at all. I think they're going to be super cute. Um, so yeah, plain vanilla top down sock. I haven't decided what kind of heel I will do. Maybe heel flap and gusset actually because I haven't done that for a while. Um, and I'm doing it on my chow goose. So this is a 2.25 set and this is the extra small cable so it is really really dinky and unlike the the small and the large um the small and the large chowgy cables the extra smalls you can put a kink in them quite easily because they're really tiny so it's just something to bear in mind um just you have to be a little bit more careful with them like i already have a little bit of a kink on this needle they're really easy to get out again um but yeah if you're someone who's really hardened or needles just just watch out for that um yeah, so I'm knitting them two up just so that I can knit from the inside and the outside of the ball at the same time and get absolutely everything out of this. I may be able to get both pairs, both socks out of this because I have quite small feet. So we'll see. But I'm not I'm not stressing about it basically. It's just a thing I can pull out and just knit mindless stocking out on, on the bus. So that's my bus socks. <laughs> you might see more of those in future because that's probably going to be quite a I'll have like a bus project which will be this, and it's sitting in my Aurora Shoes um, tote bag. If I haven't mentioned before, I have a pair of uh, leather shoes from Aurora, who are a New York-based uh, handmade shoe company, and I love them. Um, they are one of my favourite shoes to wear. I mean, kind of all year round, but I tend to wear them with either with bare feet or with tights. Um, and I've got like a kind of Mary Jane sort of style, but they're they're just, yeah, they're just beautiful. I love them a lot. Okay, the next whip is again, pretty straightforward one, but whoop, what are you stuck on? Okay, so I have quite a big stash of Newtedon. I don't talk about it loads because I have some feelings about the... What's the word? I have some feelings about the attitudes of um, the makers of Newton. That's probably the easiest way to say it. I'm not going to get into it loads and I'm not bashing them and I don't think they should be cancelled or anything like that. I just think that um, it's, it's a business model and they're not the only ones who have this business model either, but it's a business model I don't love. Um, because I feel like this constant creating scarcity around yarn and this weird hype and the fact you have to be a patron these days to really have a chance of buying the colours that you might want. I don't know, there are a few things about it that um, have sort of bothered me. I have bought from them I think three times total and the last time was an absolute mess, not because of, ship, uh, of strikes or anything like that, just um everything was delayed and it wasn't anybody's fault but when people started asking very valid questions about where their packages might be there was a really snarky post put out on instagram effectively saying read our website and check that your uh your question isn't answered there before you come like asking your stupid questions at us kind of thing and i was like i get that you're a small business and i know that it's frustrating but there's no need to make people feel bad and to, just to be rude and make people feel like you're doing them a favour when they're buying stuff from you. Like, it's just not, it's just not necessary. And, um, yeah, so I have some new to do and I will keep working through it, but I'm, pro I'm not going to be promoting it a ton. I love unspun yarn. There are lots of great unspun yarns to get from the world. Um, I really wanted to try some Thrive from well in twine but i just didn't have the finances to do it this time around so anyway all that to say <laughs> that's my little soapbox moment on newton um all that to say i am using up some stash for this using up some of my lovely yarn pantry that i have so this is a little shawl just a little squishy garter shawl which i would give to my mum if she wasn't um a little bit intolerant to wool, particularly this kind of wool. It's, it's not going to do well for her as a shawl around her neck. But for me, it will be perfect. And guess what? It's yellow. 
<laughs> or a variation of yellow. Um, so I'm holding it with a yellow hand dyed mohair from a, from a maker who doesn't exist anymore. So I, um, I'll put the details up, but, but they don't, uh, they, they don't exist. They're not on Etsy or anything anymore. So unfortunately you can't get it, but it's a pale yellow mohair and I'm holding that together with, um, two different colors of, uh, Newton. And this first one doesn't have a name or it, it might have done at some point, but it was an, it was like an extra little ball that little cake that came in with, um, my Siligit, which is this color here, which if you've seen my, um, previous, I think I'm wearing it in my previous video. Yes. Yes, I am. So I'm wearing it. I'm wearing my, my tulip sweater, which is made out of this in my previous video. Um, and I love that colour and I've still got quite a lot left. I will say unspun yarn goes a really long way. Um, so I'm holding it single stranded with mohair and then just doing a big squishy garter shawl. This is this guy here, which is a more muted kind of goldy brassy tone. And the saligate is much more orangey. And then I've striped it together with the Sally Gig and then I've gone back into just straight uh, that other colour. And I'm going to, so there'll be another block of, of this. It's probably quite hard to see the difference, but that's just that by itself and that's striped together. And I decided I'm going to go back into this and just use it up until it's finished and see how big that gets. And then, um, and then do straight into pure Sally Gig at the end. So the more orangey tone. So it's probably quite hard to see. Oh, there you go. So that's striped together, one than the other. It's a really straightforward pattern. I'm literally just increasing it at the end of each, uh, end of every other. So I'm knitting and increasing and then knitting and increasing. So I'm effectively increasing on each side. So it's a, it's a one row repeat and it's garter. So it's just knitting. Um, I was gonna use it as a bus project, but unspun yarn is, not the best as a travel pro like certain kinds of travel is fine but buses are a little bit um <laughs> bumpy for unspun yarn so that is a little project that sits in my one of my two knitting baskets this one's coming up here in a minute um which are vintage baskets that have had their handles refurbed by um wrapping them in beautiful rainbow yarn they're from etsy i'll i'll um link the maker in my show notes so that's my first second whip bus socks garter shawl now this is a whip but it's now on pause and i'll explain so this beautiful basket holds lots and lots of holst super soft which if you can't tell already by these two giant cones i'm a fan of holst super soft so um I've wanted to knit a half and half triangles wrap by Pearl Soho for a while. It's a free pattern, it's a lovely pattern, but it is two giant triangles, one of each colour. One of one of one colour and one of the other colour. And then you fold it uh, across the diagonal to make it into a shawl. And it's ginormous and very schlanket and very much my vibe. And I've wanted to make one for a while, but I didn't have that quantity of a fingering weight yarn that I wanted to put into a shawl. So then they came out with their striped version and it's amazing. And I immediately was like, oh no, I really want to make this. But it's a lot of fingering weight and I was worrying about the cost and thinking like, oh, I don't know if I've got enough of, of block colours. I think it's the kind of pattern that you probably could do variegated yarn, but I think it really shines in, in tonals and um, solids. So I was knitting away on this and realised that I had two cones of um, Holst Super Soft and there is a lot of yardage in these cones. They're such good value for money. If you've ever bought woolly knit cones or Holst Super Soft or just cones in general, you'll know like they are incredible value for money as a rule. Um, and I really enjoy knitting with Super Soft. So then I thought, well, super soft is really reasonable and if i put a big enough order in i could still justify getting it directly from them as well and not needing to go through 
anyone else which i if i can i would i love to do that because it means that you know they're, they're getting all the money from my purchase um and obviously i had uh then i had access to their entire color library so again if you follow me on instagram you may know i have a graphic design background and i decided with my graphic design skills that are definitely being used all the time these days um to make digital versions of every single hundred and something 101 colors um of whole super soft and then i made a little template so that i could test color combinations out and i got really excited about it and i also decided i would love to have a little uh relaxed cow and it's not a normal cow it's just it was literally i said to my best friend, I would love it if we were making these together with no deadlines, just whenever we feel like working on them because it's such a lovely pattern and it's really, really mindless, which both of us sort of need at the moment. And then it became a three friend thing. <laughs> and it probably will end up being more, but all that to say, I spent far too much time choosing my other four colors. So I've got these two already, which is the granite and then this one here is larch which is the base color i used for my sundial sweater by iris iris makes uh which i also love it's really beautiful and actually it's probably going to show up lovely yeah there you go really multi-dimensional green it's got some yellow got some blue yeah beautiful color um so i already had those two so i knew i was kind of in the greens and darks space and then these ooh, are the other four so i'm going to hold them up two at a time so the two dark ones i have is i have ink which is a black and i have dark olive which is a beautiful dark green they're very close to each other in dark like they look exactly the same but they are distinctly not they are different colors so that's the two darker colors and then my two slightly lighter colors are pebble whoop there we go which is this really beautiful um warm gray and it's, I mean, as with all whole, uh, super soft colours, it's really multi multifaceted. There are lots of different colours in there. And this is such an interesting colour. So this is Willow. Yeah. Which just looks like a minty green until you get close up. You might not be able to tell all the different colours in there. But it's got, it's got like brown, pale green. It's got quite a vibrant green in the middle and then some pale gray so it's like an it's it's literally like um like there's a kind of moss that grows on like silver birch trees and it looks just like that like lichen yeah beautiful color so i'm not starting my actual shawl just yet because um Monica and I are going to cast it on together when I next go and visit her, which will probably be February. So I'm not touching this now. I am, I'm putting it away, putting it to bed. But I got so excited and I messaged her and said, would you mind if I make my mini swatch? Because I want to just check how these colours play together. And she was like, yes, of course you can. So I, may, I also bought, um, I put the order in together for all of the yarn, extra yarn that I needed for mine and the yarn for hers as well. And it's so reasonable. It's so reasonable. I mean, I think I bought a kilo of yarn. So 10, 10, 50 gram, 20, 50 gram balls, sorry. So 10, 100 grams of each. And it was less than 70 pounds with shipping from Denmark. So just, yeah. If you're interested in finding some very reasonable fingering weight yarn to do stuff with, I can really recommend, if you're a, if you're a non-superwash natural fibres fan, can recommend Whole Super Soft wholeheartedly. So I knitted up my mini swatch for my, ah, oh, look at it, it's so cute. <laughs> okay, so um, it's a free pattern, so I can talk quite openly about how it's constructed. You cast on along the bottom, and this this is this will be your biggest, your, your first cast on uh, number of stitches. So for the final project, it's a lot. I think it's 256 or something. Big number of stitches here. Then using short rows, you go back and forth and then you join in your next colour, which I did on the wrong side, ignore that. Then you go back and forth and then you join your next colour and go back and forth until you've finished your first triangle. So it will look like 
this. Then you join your next colour and you knit all the way along the diagonal, picking up all of your um, wrapped stitches and all the way back again. So you do end up with one collar down the middle of whatever whatever this first stripe is going to be. So it's worth keeping that in mind when you're planning out. Uh, and then, sorry, you knit from this end, from your cast on end, all the way up and all the way down. Then you stripe together your next colour. So in my case, that was the black and the pebble. Stripe together. Then you have a block of the um, whatever your second stripe colour was here. This isn't, by the way, perfectly ratioed like this. These two stripes are a bit wrong. Like there should be more of a block here, but I was just checking. So I didn't do it perfectly. Um, <clears throat> I have the pebble there. This is the that willow colour, which is again a straight block. And then you start striping back in with whatever your colour was here. So what you end up with is a really amazingly massive squishy shawl that you can wrap around yourself. Now what I realised when I finished my, the reason these mini swatches are so helpful is what I realised when I folded it in half is I've got all my green on this side and all neutral on this side, which is fine, like it's not bad, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch out um, this pebble colour here for my mid green, which is the larch, so that I've got olive on one side and the pebble, which is that warm, uh, warm grey plus the cool grey, and then I will have this olive will be sitting on this side instead, which I think will work really well. So that's my next whip, which won't be going any further until February, but that's fine and I'm very excited about it. And now all of that yarn is going to go and have a little hibernate together. Whew, more coffee required, because my word. I think this might end up being my longest episode ever, which makes sense because I've got loads to talk about. Okay, last thing. So, um, again, Instagram followers will be sort of aware of these, but I have been working for a while, for quite a while actually, on this concept of a simple stranded colourwork heel. Because I always thought that it was really weird like for me, colourwork socks are great because they have because they have effectively a double layer of yarn. They're much sturdier than vanilla socks are. And I have, you know, winter boots and stuff like that. And I always wear through the toes or the heels on my socks, depending on the shoes that I'm wearing them with. And so I've been working on a way to get a color a simple colourwork heel that's not too complicated, that doesn't take loads, and then once you've done it a couple of times, you should be able to remember it and do it again. Um, I've been working on it for ages and trying to think about different kinds of fit and stuff. And obviously there are so many different ways of making socks, but I think I finally nailed it. <laughs> so this is my new sock design, which will be coming out. I'm just knitting this one and then I will knit my second to make sure, like as I'm writing up the pattern that it makes sense, which is my usual kind of way with socks. I'll do the first one, write it up and then knit the second one following up following the written instructions to make sure it makes sense and then I'll deal with grading and tech editing and stuff. Um, I haven't got a name yet but I did have a great suggestion for a name today which might be the one I go with. Um, but this is my new sock design. So you might recognise these colours. Ta -da. Uh, so yeah I'm using up my leftovers from my stripy sweater in this. So this is BFL 100% BFL and this is from Tiny Teal Handcraft and then the toe is I think it's buttered let me just check I think it is I think it's oh yeah so this is my leftover buttered nervous fiber 100% Corridale and I'm, I held it together with that yellow mohair that I was that I'm using in the um shawl uh, for a bit of extra strength. I am also playing with an idea for a toe up colour work toe, but I haven't finished it yet. So that will be the next design that comes out. Um, but what I wanted to do was create a heel that you could probably implement on most other sock patterns without having to hack them up too much. So if you have any other colour work pattern where it's mostly an instep pattern, um, you should be able to implement this heel 
which is really exciting. So uh, I'll talk about it a little bit, but effectively speaking, it's a flegal heel. Um, so you knit up to a certain point, which in this case would be here, which is just straight. So this is just a standard sock tube up to that point, straightforward, round and round. You've got um, seed stitch on the bottom and then a very simple repeat on the front. Once you've done the first row, you always know where you are as well. So it's very straightforward. And then what I've done also is added this line across. Um, oops, there we go. Added this line across the side, which just helps you sort of always know where you are and it helps to hide some of the kind of potential messiness with increases and stuff um there it's not messy it's just that um when you're doing alternate stitches like this you'll end up with having doubles occasionally so it's nice to have this line so that it kind of merges together a little bit better um and then basically from this point you increase so there is a way that you increase your color work as you go up to here and then once you've doubled your stitch count on the back you create your flegal heel and this is this is the only part where you have to do color work in the flat so you're doing rows not rounds but it's really not as complicated as you might think i will be releasing videos with this pattern so that there'll be way that you'll know how to um how to do it but as a continental knitter I hold both my strands on one finger and pick which one I need. So it doesn't actually make that much difference to me um, doing it flat, which I was not expecting. The one thing I will say is I have had to change needle size in order to do this. So these are three mil, I think. Yeah, these are three mil needles. Ordinarily I knit socks on 2.25s. So that's something to bear in mind if you're gonna make them. It's what always worth upping your needle size slightly for tight gauge colour work because it does tend to um it doesn't stretch as much just by its nature because of the floats but I will have also designed it so that there isn't really anywhere that's got a long float I think the longest float is that there is an occasional four stitch one at the beginning of some of these rounds um but that's it other than that you never have more than three stitches uh, as a float and yeah you just pick up pick up your stitches all the way all the way across the back um in short rows and then when you get back to your original stitch count join in the round and that's it it's very straightforward i'm gonna do a nice fluffy mohair cuff as well just because i can um because <clears throat> i think it's always nice to have like a little top and tail for patterns like this um yeah i'm really really happy with it really happy with it so i just need to do a little bit of work on writing it up and then the testicle I did it again. Ah, oh, the call for testers, not the testicle. Call. <laughs> oh dear. The call for testers <laughs> will hopefully be in the new year, uh, quite early in the new year. I'm more, I've already started writing it up and it's going quite well. So um, yeah, I'm hoping it's not going to take too much longer. I'm going to aim to finish this sample and get the second one started. Um, over the holidays. I don't really have much time off. My day job is quite intense at the moment and I'm one of the only people working between uh, Christmas and New Year. I've also got some like health stuff going on so I might not I might not get it done that quickly but that's the intention. If it's a bit slower than that then then that's fine. You might have noticed I'm progressively moving this way that's because the sun has officially come come around now. Uh, beautiful winter sun as it is. Uh, that's everything that I wanted to talk to you about today and because we are almost at the hour mark I'm actually going to leave it there for today um, and we'll talk about chatter another time but really quickly before we go it's my 10th episode and uh, basically just wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody who has been here or, or who has been supporting Roots and Stitches or both which I know is a lot of you as well so thank you so much for that. Uh, Roots and Stitches is going really well. Kat and I are so grateful to all of you. Uh, we've had we've been able to connect with some incredible makers. We've got some really big plans for next year and 
I think I never I never really knew that running a business like this could be or building something creatively like this could be so intentional and um, it gives back in a way that I wasn't expecting um, and we've tried to build it in a way that means that we can both put it down when we need to um, because we, we both have you know lives outside of it um, and partners and health stuff and you know it's it's really nice to be building a community that's really um, I don't know just very compassionate very aware of each other um, and really accepting of things and it's it's beautiful and I, I'm can't gush about it enough <laughs> thank you for still sticking around in my weird corner of the internet um even though i haven't been here that much i really appreciate all of you and um yeah i hope that you're all doing well uh i hope that you all have a gentle holiday season whatever that looks like for you uh, mine is going to be probably quite quiet this year and I'm wishing you all the absolute best for 2023 which will probably be the next time that I speak to you so until next time move slow and make things mm -hmm.